Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about how cells divide, so let's jump right in. One universal characteristic of living organisms is the ability to reproduce. For reproduction to occur, the cell or cells of organisms must undergo cell division. In multicellular organisms, cells must also divide for developmental growth and to replace deceased cells with new ones. Prokaryotes undergo a type of cell division during which they roughly double their volume before splitting in two. This is called binary fission. Prokaryotes usually carry most of their genes on a single circular chromosome, part of the cell's nucleoid, and often have several smaller sections of DNA called plasmids. Remember from the previous video that prokaryotic genomes are circular and are copied from a single origin of replication. This is true for chromosomes as well as plasmids. Binary fission starts when the chromosome begins to replicate at this site, producing two separate copies of the origin site. Quickly thereafter, while the chromosome is still replicating, one origin moves towards the opposite end of the cell. Once replication is complete, the plasma membrane pinches inward uh, towards the middle, dividing the cell in two. This results in proper segregation of the chromosome, ensuring that each daughter cell inherits one genome. For high copy plasmids, large numbers ensure that each daughter cell receives a few copies by chance alone, without any need for an active partition system. However, for chromosomes and low-copy plasmids, segregation requires the action of proteins, which actively move the chromosomes, pushing and pulling them towards their intended places. This partition machinery consists of three parts. 1. Motor proteins that generate the force for the movement of the chromosome. 2. A centromere-like binding site. And 3. Another protein that acts as an adapter, linking the aforementioned binding site to the force-generating protein. It is interesting to note that different plasmids use completely different sets of proteins. There are several different partition systems known. The type 1 partition system, with motor protein par A and adapter protein par B, is similar to the partition system of chromosomes. The best understood system is the type 2 or par MCR system, the motor of which is homologous to the actin proteins that form the microfilaments of the eukaryotic cytoskeleton. There are also other bacterial homologues to eukaryotic cytoskeletal proteins, FTSZ, which forms a ring that is involved in the pinching of the plasma membrane during binary fission, is a good example. It is related to tubulin proteins that form microtubules. Microtubules are essential for cell division in eukaryotes, for which there are two types, mitosis and meiosis. The reason for why there are two is eukaryotes can do something that doesn't happen in prokaryotes, they habitually change the number of genome copies of their cells. You know, sex and stuff. The number of genome copies an organism has is called ploidy. For example, most of our cells have two copies of the genome, hence they are diploid. Although there are some uh, organisms that can have more than two copies, which are called polyploid. The cells of some organisms can contain hundreds of copies. Prokaryotes can also be polyploid. There are some gigantic bacteria with extreme polyploidy containing tens of thousands of genome copies. When one diploid or polyploid eukaryotic cell undergoes meiosis, the resulting cells will have half of the original set of genome copies, which is called haploidy. We often say that haploid cells are also called gamete cells, but this is only true for eukaryotes with a diploid dominant life cycle. In animals like us, the only haploid cells are gametes but other organisms produce more haploid cells after meiosis via mitosis, which maintains the haploid number of gene copies in the daughter cells. In fact, fungi are haploid throughout most of their life cycle, and plants have something called alternation of generations, with distinct haploid, gametophyte, and diploid, sporophyte, stages, as mentioned in our video Palynology, each having at least a few cycles of mitotic cell divisions. The number of mitotic divisions in each stage aren't always equal in different groups. In non-vascular plants, the gametophyte grows separately, 
but it is diminished and highly dependent on the sporophyte. In flowering plants, the gametophyte stage consists of just a few cells. It should also be mentioned that the mitochondria and plastids of eukaryotes also divide like they are their own cells. However, while eukaryotes divide via mitosis or meiosis, these organelles divide like bacteria via binary fission. In hindsight, this isn't surprising since it is now widely accepted that these organelles originated from bacteria via endosymbiosis. We mentioned in the video DNA replication that the majority of a cell's life is spent in interphase, which accounts for about 90% of the cell cycle. During interphase, the cell prepares itself for mitosis, which is called the M phase in the cell cycle, and accounts for the remaining 10%. Interphase is divided in three stages. The first is GAP1, or G1, during which the rate of protein synthesis is increased, and the cell grows to about double its original size. In the following S phase, which stands for DNA synthesis, the DNA of the genome is replicated. Then, in the GAP2, or G2 phase, the cell resumes its growth, preparing for the M phase. The timing and the rate of the entire cell cycle is strictly regulated by a control system, which is especially necessary in multicellular organisms with specialized cells that must divide at different rates and in response under different circumstances. In the 1970s, a variety of experiments were conducted that showed there were specific signaling molecules in the cytoplasm that regulated the cell cycle. For example, they fused cells that were at different stages of the cell cycle. When a cell in the S phase was fused with one in G1, the nucleus of the G1 cell went straight into the S phase. When a cell in the M phase was fused with one in the G1 phase, the G1 nucleus began the process of mitosis, even though the genome hadn't been replicated yet. The signals present in the former cell that underwent mitosis also induced mitosis in the second cell. Overall, the control system is typified by different checkpoints where inhibitor and inducer signals can act to inhibit or induce the cell with regard to the cell cycle. There are three checkpoints known. First is the G1 checkpoint, or the restriction point, which is very important in us. Without any inducer signal, the cell will exit the cell cycle and enter an inactive state known as GAP0, or the G0 phase. Most of our cells are actually in this phase, especially mature nerve and muscle cells, which never divide. Some G0 cells can be induced to enter the G1 phase again by external signals, such as growth factors that are released after injury. The G2 checkpoint, which is regulated by cyclin, acts as the cell cycle clock since its concentration fluctuates rhythmically. When the cyclin concentration is increased, it forms a complex with CDK called MPF, which is the inducer that promotes the cell to go past the G2 checkpoint and go into the M phase. G2 checkpoint is also called the G2M DNA damage checkpoint since it prevents the cell from undergoing mitosis before it has replicated and repaired any damage in its DNA. The third M checkpoint occurs in the M phase. Understanding these processes is crucial for understanding how cancer develops and are also important targets of cancer therapies. Now let's continue with the M phase. In this process, the cell goes through five stages. Prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. During prophase, the cell completes a number of tasks. The replicated DNA is condensed into chromosomes each consisting of two sister chromatids that are joined at the centromeres for ease of maneuverability. Centrosomes are moved to the poles, and the nucleolus breaks down. For reference, centrosomes are centrioles surrounded by microtubules and the paracentriolar matrix, which is a blob of proteins. The surrounding microtubules also form the early mitotic spindle, which extends from the centrioles. And the nucleolus produces ribosomes, so breaking this down forces the cell to redirect energy from general processes to cell division. Next, it's during prometaphase that the nuclear envelope breaks down and kinetochores form on the centromeres of the chromosomes. Kinetochores are protein complexes to which the microtubules of the mitotic spindle attach for movement of the chromosome. Microtubules push and pull the chromosomes to the center of the cell, called the metaphase plate, and during metaphase, the chromosomes are aligned along the plate, hence the name. 
Now here is where the last M checkpoint occurs. If everything went well, each chromosome should be under tension from microtubules on both sides, each side attached to one of the two chromatids. There is a mechanism that senses this tension and it inhibits the anaphase promoting complex that initiates the next phase until every chromosome is under bidirectional tension. This ensures that during anaphase, each chromosome is split by the microtubule into theoretically identical sister chromatids and the chromatids are dragged to the opposite poles of the cell via the depolarization of the microtubules and motor proteins at the kinetochores. And like microtubules and microfilaments of the eukaryotic cytoskeleton, kinetochore proteins also share homologs with proteins in prokaryotes, even though they don't use a kinetochore themselves. In a paper published in May 2019, Tromer et al. proposed that the kinetochore evolved from proteins involved in various pre-eukaryotic and eukaryotic systems, as well as novel folds, and that a subset of these duplicated, giving rise to the kinetochore complex. Finally, during telophase and cytokinesis, the chromatids have been moved to the poles. The cell splits in two daughter cells, the nucleus reforms in both cells, going back into the G1 phase. This description of mitosis is what happens in most eukaryotes, including plants and animals. However, in some, such as dinoflagellates, yeasts, and diatoms, the nuclear envelope remains intact during mitosis. Furthermore, in some dinoflagellates, the kinetochores don't attach to microtubules. Instead, the chromosomes attach to the nuclear envelope. The important point is that both the parent and daughter cells have the same sets of genes. This is not true of meiosis. Meiosis instead occurs in two phases, meiosis 1 and 2. Meiosis 2 is just mitosis for the haploid cells. Meiosis 1 is where the interesting stuff happens. Just like mitosis, meiosis is split into prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. However, in prophase 1 of meiosis, sister chromosomes exchange homologous DNA sequences in a process called recombination. This too occurs in several steps. Leptotene, zygotene, pachytene, diplotene, and diakinesis. Side note, I learned a mnemonic for this process in college that says, Led Zeppelin plays drums daily. Whatever it takes to pass the test, right? Anyway, during leptotene, the chromosomes begin to condense and match up with their homologous pairs. In zygotene, homologous chromosomes line up their homologous sequences, and the sequences adhere to each other via synapses. The conjoined chromosomes form the synaptonemal complex. In pachytene, recombination nodules form on the synaptonemal complex to facilitate the crossing over of genetic sequences. During diplotene, the synaptonemal complex breaks down and sister chromosomes are separated. Lastly, in diakinesis, the nuclear envelope breaks down and centrosomes move to the poles, just like in mitotic prophase. So the result of recombination in meiosis 1 is that chromosomes now have genetic sequences from both parents. This creates genetic variations in your gametes. Together, recombination and mutations provide the raw substrate for the mechanisms of evolution to act on, producing the suite of biodiversity that exists today. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.